Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So we're actually going to be installing something on the STI tonight. This has been something that has been on my modification list for many years actually. It's one of those things that's always been there. I just never got around to doing it. It's something pretty small, but definitely important. It is one of those things that just kept getting pushed down the list. And now that I finally had time to actually install it, I wanted to make a video on it. If you guys have been following me along, you guys know that I have just installed a Varus Engineering rear diffuser. I was so happy with that. So happy with the fitment, the quality, everything about it was exactly what I was looking for. So if there's a new modification that I do install on this car, uh, and it's by a new brand that I never tried before, um, and then I end up really liking it. What I normally do is I take a deeper dive into the company and see what other parts they have to offer. And thankfully, Varus Engineering has quite a few things for this car. Um, and I actually picked up quite a few. I actually have another box over there that we're going to be installing in another video. And they actually have something else coming as well that is not here yet that we're going to be installing as well. But in this video, this is something that I suggest if you're stock, if you're modified, doesn't matter. I definitely suggest you install it no matter what. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because this is more of a reliability mod than anything. It's a safety modification because we all know that these motors in general produce a lot of heat. So any way that we can actually restrict, remove, or reduce the amount of heat anywhere in this engine is definitely a plus. So Varus Engineering being the amazing company that they are, they developed a new modification for this car to help us battle the heat. And that modification is a cam solenoid heat shield. Yes, I understand this looks like a very simple and kind of silly modification, but I assure you this will definitely help overall. Now the reason why Varus Engineering developed this kit and this heat shield is because the cam solenoid right by the turbo up pipe and header connection. Uh, so right there creates a lot of heat. And uh, what that actually can do is actually can melt the factory plastic cover. And if that melts, your cam solenoid most likely will fail and then you're going to have issues and you're going to be going on a huge manhunt to try to find what is wrong with your car um, when simply you could have avoided it by installing one of these. Now what you get in this kit is super simple, nothing crazy, nothing hard to install. It's uh, literally just a heat shield made of 304 stainless. For the sake of this video, when you do get this, there's a sticker that comes on this as well as the bracket. You just peel it right off. What that sticker actually is, is actually protects it when it's in the machine getting cut so it doesn't get all messed up and everything and it stays nice. So all you gotta do is peel it off and this is what it looks like. You get the uh, reflective gold tape to help with the heat reduction. You also get uh, one for the little bracket right here as well, which is pretty cool. And then you get the hardware. And as you can see, there's really not much at all. It's literally three screws here, and then one longer bolt, a couple washers, um, and a spacer as well. It's a super, super simple install. They have a manual uh, instructions of how to install it on their website. I'll link it below for you guys if you uh, wanna follow that, but I figured I would show you how to install it in this video since I'm doing it anyway. So let's go ahead, let's get the car jacked up. I have a TBW performance under tray on there, so it's gonna take a little bit more time to get that off. But once I get that off and I get everything set up, I'll catch back up with you guys and show you where we're working and how to install that. So as you can tell, we are under the car. One of the really cool things about the TBW Performance under tray is that you don't have to remove the whole thing to gain access. Um, they have these little side pieces that come right off. So removing that uh, gave me complete access to where we are going to be working. So we're actually going to be working right here. Um, very, very easy access. Uh, I might have to remove it a little bit, maybe kind of take some of the screws out um, so I have a little bit more access. but. I'm, I can fit my hand in here totally fine, so I'll probably be able to do it no problem. Um, this is just a grounding strap that you need to remove, but um, we're going to be working right here. So let's go ahead and let's get the uh, heat shield prepped. 
with the little gold foil tape and then we can get back under here uh, and get it on the car. All right, so what we're actually going to do now uh, to get this prepped is spray it down with either IPA. I use Gion Prep on anything that I use to get the oils off and fingerprints and all that. So we're gonna get a nice clean prep surface uh, before we get the gold reflective uh, tape on. Applied. Unfortunately, when he was peeling it off, it's kind of really thin right here, so it's kind of hard to uh, keep the logo there, but whatever, not a big deal. I got the little bracket covered as well. It fits very, very nicely. Um, there's some room for adjustments, obviously. They make the holes a little bit bigger. It doesn't have to be completely covered, but yeah, overall, really simple to install. They leave nice cuts and everything for um, it to wrap around all the edges nicely. So uh, yeah, so now what we're actually going to do is install uh, one of the actual bolts and the reason why they ask you to do this before you get to the car is because you're not going to be able to get to it once you're bolting it up. So I'm going to show you what to do next uh, to get it prepped and then we can move over to the car and get this piece on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start getting this uh, ready. We're going to actually install one of the bolts. Um, it comes with four bolts as I mentioned. There's one longer one and three shorter ones. Um, so we're actually going to take the longer one and we're going to install it on this hole right here. So we're gonna take the long bolt and take one of the washers. Now you can either use the large ones or the small ones. Honestly, it's just personal preference. You're not gonna use all of them. They even mentioned that in their video. I'm going to use the small ones as they did. Um, I just prefer it since it's not gonna be as big and kind of as ugly. It's gonna be a little bit more hidden. So take a small washer, put it like that. And we're gonna take our heat shield and put it through that hole right there. Flip it on over, take our spacer, drop it on there. And then you're going to take this locking washer and what you're actually going to do is you're going to slip it on uh, the bolt right here. And then they tell you to take a nine millimeter long socket to push this down. So what you're actually going to do is push it down like that. So basically that's going to lock that bolt there with the spacer um, and you're going to be set. So you still have the adjustability to move it back and forth but it's not gonna fall out when we go to install it. So, so now that we got that installed and got everything prepped and ready to go, we can go ahead and install it on the car. All right, so I'm working under here. Very, very hard to show, but um, if we move the O2 sensor line out of the way, you can see this hole right here. It's unused in the uh, cam solenoid. Uh, we're actually going to uh, thread in the bolts right there into that hole right there. So um, it's gonna take a little trial and error just to try to get it threaded, but once I get it done, make sure there's nothing in the way. This is an O2 sensor line. I'm going to try to tuck it up um, underneath the heat shield so it's away from the headers and everything. But once I get that threaded, I'll uh, show you the next step. But it's going to take a little trial and error just to kind of thread it in there um, since you're kind of doing it blindly. But let me go ahead, get that installed, and then I'll uh, catch back up with you in a second. All right, guys. So we got the bolt Thread it in right there, hard to see. Um, as I mentioned, this is an O2 line that I'm gonna have to tie up somewhere else. Um, it used to be uh, zip tied to the little bracket on the uh, cam solenoid, but I actually had to cut the zip tie to uh, get the heat shield on there since it was in the way and I wasn't able to put the heat shield up um, with that O2 sensor line in the way there. Now this is specific to the Killer B headers since the uh, O2 sensor is right on the side right here. Um, so you may have a little bit easier time, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure something else out there. So we got this 10 millimeter bolt loosely tightened up. Uh, it's just into the threads, so um, it's gonna be into place. Now the next step that we're going to do is actually put that little bracket um, that we put some gold foil tape on, um, and then we can tighten everything up. So really, really easy once you get it threaded, um, but it took a little time to get that done. So let me go ahead, let's get that little bracket and put it on those two holes right there and it's actually going to attach to the uh, timing belt cover right there, that bolt, uh, and we should be good to go. All right, there we go, guys. Everything is installed, everything is tightened up. As you can see back here, I have the bracket installed. It's just the two uh, short uh, 10 millimeters. They take out the timing belt cover bolt right here, and it just slips right through. Then right here is the O2 sensor, but I actually have it zip tied to the uh, ground. So when I um, tighten that down to the frame, it's gonna hold it up nice and tight and it's gonna be 
away from the header so we should be good but yeah there is the install pretty straightforward like i said the hardest part was getting that first uh 10 millimeter bolt right there but it's incredibly sturdy i'm really happy i have that installed now so i don't have to worry about it it was always one of those things that i couldn't wait to get done because um, i didn't want to have any issues and thankfully there was no um, issues of it getting too hot or anything like that but even so it's just one of those reassurance things this thing was only like 120 bucks so it doesn't break the bank or anything like that it's one of those things you can just knock out on a weekend get it finished up um, and have that added reassurance uh, for all those reliability mods that i love doing um, so i'm gonna go ahead and get everything uh, installed back on the tbw uh, under tray i gotta put the little cover on here and the side piece and i gotta um, screw in that ground and we should be set so once i get that all finished up uh, we can wrap this video up All right guys, so that wraps up the install of the Varus Engineering Cam Solenoid Heat Shield. Super simple, it literally only took me about 30, 45 minutes, and that is with filming and everything. Like I mentioned, that first 10 millimeter bolt uh, was the hardest just because you're kind of going in blind, you can't really see what you're doing. Once you get it, everything goes very, very quickly. Uh, and it bolts up very very well i've been super hyped about all the various engineering parts i've been putting on this car i absolutely love the fit the finish everything about it um, the instruction manuals the website very very helpful and i'm really uh, thankful that they're creating products for this car um, and stuff to actually help uh, prolong the longevity of the car overall. Now, just a little preview. Next install that we are going to be doing from Varus Engineering is actually the lower control arm uh, rear covers. So this actually bolts up uh, to the diffuser. So it's going to create extra downforce. It's gonna put another body panel underneath the car to help with uh, the overall airflow and everything um, and also it's going to keep uh, the lower control arm area as well as the coilovers and stuff in the back um, much cleaner since there's actually going to be a cover there so if you drive in the northeast or anywhere where there's inclement weather you deal with snow and salt and all that stuff these are definitely a must uh, to put on your car just to help with the overall cleanliness and just to keep the dirt and grime and everything out of uh, underneath the car um, and plus they look really cool. But like I said, these bolt right up to my uh, Varus Engineering diffuser as well. So it's gonna be all one cohesive piece. It's gonna be really nice and I'm really looking forward to getting these installed. Uh, most likely this is going to be the next video. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I do need to do an oil change on the truck. Uh, so I might get that done and do a video on it. Uh, but either way, this is coming up um, and there's another Varus Engineering part coming in as well. That we're going to get installed so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions at all about the heat shield or anything else on the sti please let me know in the comments below but in the meantime keep it clean keep it simple and i'll catch you guys in the next one